good morning and welcome to the next lecture of the course on energy conservation and waste heat recovery okay so today what we will do is we are going to start with a new topic a very important one at it it's on energy storage so let me write it down energy storage now what is it that i mean by energy storage okay so if you look at it the demand for electricity okay and when we are talking about uh, you know the the energy that we use in our day to day lives the most important form is electricity now the demand for electricity if you look at it it has a variation it is not constant right so depending on where we are whether it's domestic use whether it's industrial use um, whether it's an educational building an academic campus uh, what happens is if we plot the electricity demand over a period of 24 hours in a day we will see that there are certain periods where we need more electricity which we will call the peak periods and there will be certain days or certain periods during the day when we will have less demand okay so it, there there is a fluctuating demand if we plot the electricity demand over 24 hour period we will see that the demand is not constant it's rather variable okay so this is true not just on a daily basis uh, there is also a seasonal variation for example uh, in our country or at least the part that we are in uh, where the summers can be very hot the winter not so much uh, we will definitely have the air conditioning load during summer months which we won't have in winter okay similarly if we talk about cold countries it will be the opposite summer if the summer there is mild it is okay but in winter you need heating right uh, so therefore we will see a seasonal change from summer to winter and one can be higher one can be lower depending on that if we talk of an academic com campus like ours we will see that the demand uh, the electricity will be less during the vacation the electricity consumption or demand will be less during the vacation periods because those that is a time when class classes do not happen and therefore the electricity usage in classrooms across the campus is way way lower compared to when the semester goes on okay so that is what is the crux of the problem today the fact that the energy demand is not constant throughout the day so if you look at this slide that is what we are seeing that the demand is variable it's an hourly even season to season but however the supply that we have okay or at least the peak supply that we can have typically from a power plant is constant okay it is well strictly speaking the power plants also have feedback control systems by which they can control the the steam uh, the steam rate therefore the in a thermal power plant the amount of coal that needs to be burned and spent and so on but ra but if you ask any plant manager in a power plant he would be very happy if the supply throughout the day is constant okay so that is the ideal uh, what they would like to do so that that makes things much simpler and uh, the operation also gets simplified all right so uh, we will come back to this slide this is what we were talking about this is a typical uh, curve that i got from the us energy information administration and this is new england well new england is is a state in usa okay it's not in england uh, it's in the eastern part of usa uh, that that there's an area called it's not a state actually there is an area uh, which which consists of few states which is called the new england area okay this is a data from 2010 but uh, again this is just to show the trend it is not going to be too different so if you look at the electric power demand in gigawatts what do we see from midnight if you look at it from if we start from the left hand side this is midnight okay so this is the time when most of the world sleeps uh, except maybe there's maybe some night shifts that go on maybe the street lights are on and a few other so the level of activity is much lower and then people start waking up after 4 o'clock between 4 and 6 that's when people wake up um, so then the energy consumption goes up and then the uh, the day working day starts at around 8 o'clock in the morning and goes on till about 4 5 6, 6 pm like that and this is where therefore we see that there is a much higher demand for electricity okay or or the load therefore which which dictates the demand is is higher and then after the working day is over 
when we come down uh, we will see that the demand slowly comes down well this demand is still higher compared to you know this midnight and after because this is also the time when business outlets are open the shops are open and then they slowly start closing down the traffic lights on the streets come out come up uh, so therefore you see all this and then slowly you will see that the electricity demand goes down as the day progresses as, as we goes towards the time when when uh, the world goes to sleep okay so therefore however on this one if i plot the electricity uh, supply then most likely it will be a constant line okay or most ideal it will be a constant line so that is what we are saying that the therefore what happens is uh, we have to design a power plant for the maximum peak load and that is not a very smart thing to do because this is a large expensive plant mostly operating below its capacity and the problem of operating it below its capacity if something is rated for let us say uh, x megawatts and we, we are operating it at let us say 75 percent uh, on an average we are operating it at 75 or, or mostly less than 75 percent of its peak rating for most of the day uh, then it is not a very smart usage of the power plant okay. because it is not only the fact that we are uh, we have over designed something we also know that if we do not if we operate at part load then the efficiency also goes down okay so therefore that is not a very uh, desirable thing to have all right so let us now shift to the to the paper or to the board if <laughs> here and what we will therefore say is let us just jot down a few points that we talked about we will say that the demand for electricity in an utility system which can be anything uh, utility can be industrial can be domestic can be an academic campus uh, and so on in a utility system varies hourly there can be day to day variation also so weekends will have less uh, demand compared to weekdays daily as well as from season to season however but the supply is fixed let us assume this is the ideal condition so i would say ideal condition so now how do we solve this problem okay so let us think about it especially with sh shrinking fuel availability i mean i really do not want to waste any 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 additional energy that i generate so therefore what are the things that we can think of what are the ways that we can think of so a few things that i can think of for example is let us have a network of all these different power generating units which will talk to each other and and so therefore in one place if it is operating below uh, i mean at a, where the demand is low and at some place the demand is high we will have a supply intermittent uh, supply from one unit to another to meet the fluctuating demands okay so i would say is what are the solutions so let's quickly jot down i will say what i just say it is interconnected power networks that is definitely one way but it is very complicated uh, but it is possible sure second we can say that we will use the whatever new installations that we have we will have the rating at the base load which is average load and then use the older plants to meet peak load okay so have new and more expensive plants for uh, rated at the base load and use the old and existing plants for supplying the additional power that is required during peak hours okay so let's write that use newer plants for base load okay newer and more efficient plants for base load and older plants for
peak load generation. Okay. The other thing is hand in hand I would say is you construct not so expensive peaking units. Okay. So, okay fine I am going to have all my the, the, the rating of my power plant will be the base load and then I will have some not so efficient uh, maybe small lower cost infrastructure plants just to supply that additional power that I need during the peak hours. Okay. The fourth one is use energy storage systems. Okay. So, this actually is what we are going to talk about in the next few lectures. All right. So, what is energy storage system? Energy storage system means that during the low off peak hours if we, if it, if we say so, let us say during the night time, I am going to generate additional electricity than what I need. Right. So, I by some means I am going to store that electricity in some form. Remember electricity by itself cannot be stored, electrical energy is, it, it, it is not easy to store. Okay. So, that energy I will store in some form and later we will recover that energy and use it during the peak hours, let us say during the daytime, when the, when the during working hours when the demand is much higher. I am going to supply most of it from my power plant, but the remaining the, the average load, but the additional load during for the peak will be given from the stored energy that I the energy that I stored during off peak hours. Okay. So, this is what I am saying that meet the fluctuations in electricity demand and assume and assure a steady supply economically. So, plant is continuously operated in the base load mode. So, when the demand is less than capacity okay, which is off peak hours the excess energy will be stored and when the demand is greater than the capacity the stored energy will be released. Okay to meet the additional demand. So, if I want to draw that very uh, in, in a simple form I would draw it in this manner I would say this is my power let us say this is power and this is for the time being let us say this is time of the day okay. I am talking about a daily variation time of the sorry. Okay. So, what did we see? We saw that if we start from midnight and then go on till midnight here, we saw something like this. Okay. We saw that uh, let me say this is my average, I am going to draw just one line here. So, let us say this is my supply this line this red line is my supply, but my demand is going to vary it is going to be low okay. and then slowly it picks up it remains high and then slowly it kind of comes here this is what we saw. Okay. So, what happens this part is where the demand is less than supply. So, what can I do? I can store, so I would store energy Okay. And this part I would say is I would say use stored energy. Okay. So, what it means is I have a steady supply which during off peak hours is more than what I need. So, therefore, the additional supply that I have will be stored 
and which will be used during the peak hour when the supply is less than what I need clear. So, this is how it is done the way I have drawn is a little different uh, actually this line the supply line should be a little higher because what happens is the storage is for longer period typically is for a longer period and release is for shorter period or periods I would say it can be added more than one ok. All right. So, example let us say I would say is 5 megawatts times 6 hours. So, this is 30 megawatt hour and the release let us say is 10 megawatts times 3 hours. So, this will be also 30 megawatt hour as you will see these two are never equal because there will always be some losses the amount of energy that we store is the turnaround efficiency as we call it the energy that we get versus the energy that we store uh, they are never the same ok. The turnaround efficiency typically is less than 100 percent. So, which means the energy that I can release from the stored energy is always less than what I initially stored clear. So, this is what is the basic crux of energy storage ok. Now, before we move on and talk about the technologies for energy storage let us just spend some time on what is the kind of energy storage that we require ok. Well, that depends on the application. Uh, so, over here you know what I said is about megawatt hours that is the amount of energy that is stored ok. So, energy definitely is one important um, important parameter the other one however is power. Now, energy and power are not the same remember keep that in mind ok. Depending on the application you may need a high energy or high power ok. So, let us think about this let us say if I have to run an industry during the working hours then what do I need I need high energy as well as I need I need high power ok because a lot of equipments are running. So, that amount is not less clear. So, that is an example where I need high energy as well as at a moderately high power level clear. Second one let us think about our cell phones we charge it and we store some energy ok, but what is the energy consumption it is in milliwatts clear, but we need large battery life right. So, we need to store a decent amount of energy, but the power requirement here is low. So, that is why our battery life uh, I mean once we charge our batteries it runs for at least on your smartphones at least for a day or it, it should at least run for a day uh, if you are a moderate user for a light user it may be even higher uh, for a heavy user it will be less, but typically that is what uh, that is an example where we store the amount of energy stored is decent uh, of course, I am not talking about megawatts and power plants and all, but uh, the power requirement is much lower. So, therefore, the period for which the stored energy is released is long clear by the way this is not a uh, this is not per se an example a correct example for for a power plant uh, energy storage, but this is just to give you an example of of an application where power is low, but energy is moderate. Another one example is let us say in the morning if you go and start a factory then what happens immediately I would expect all my equipments to, to, to be running or at least to be, op, to, be, to be ready for operation. Now, there is always a lag I mean my generator is not going to start I mean I, I it is not the energy that I am going to get will be from the kinetic energy of the of my generator shaft ok. So, therefore, I am not going to get it is going to be difficult. So, what will happen is slowly the speed of the generator will, will come down and therefore, the frequency will come down ok. Then that will be sensed by the by the control system of the power plant and so the uh, fuel burning rate will be adjusted so that more steam is generated which is fed to the turbine which in turn turns the generator and then the power and uh, so which is fed to the turbine therefore more work is generated more mechanical work is generated and therefore the generator uh, which is fed to the generator and then i get the power demand but after the initial period for a few seconds i need 
an additional supply of energy okay from st some stored means and this is an example of an application where the amount of energy that i need is probably not very high but the power requirement is very high i may be needing it for a few seconds but at a very high level right so these are examples uh, i mean if i store energy depending on where i use it uh, it is important to know uh, what are the energy and power requirements clear so with that now let me move on to what are the different kinds of energy storage systems that we can think of so what we are going to study here uh, we are going to study some forms of mechanical energy storage we are going to talk about electrochemical energy storage electrochemical probably is the one that we are most familiar with which is batteries okay when we talk about energy storage portable systems the first thing that come to our mind is battery okay so electrochemical energy storage probably is the one that we use most of us use uh, in our daily lives we are going to talk about magnetic energy storage thermal energy storage and chemical energy storage this chemical energy storage is different from electrochemical energy storage keep that in mind all right so what we will do is we will first look at three examples or three types of mechanical energy storage schemes okay so these are the three the first one is called pumped hydroelectric or pumped hydro is what we are going to talk uh, call it in short next one is compressed air energy storage or caes and the third one is flywheels flywheels probably uh, as mechanical engineers you would have studied uh, during your mechanical engineering bachelor's course uh, we are going to recap that once more in in the context of energy storage okay so the first thing that we are going to talk about is pumped hydroelectric storage or pumped hydro so what is pumped hydro so pumped hydro storage actually means that or or what it consists of is uh, let me explain that it is shown in this picture that you see here um, but let me also draw it um, in the on the board or or yeah on the paper here okay what it essentially consists of is for pumped energy storage you need a, a height or a cliff or a hill whatever at the bottom of the hill you need a reservoir okay a water reservoir and at the top of the hill also we would like to have another reservoir okay so typically we would also have a dam over here um right now what happens over he uh, here is that during the off peak hours i'm going to use the additional electricity that i have at my disposal to run a pump that is going to pump up the water from the lower reservoir to the higher reservoir okay so which means during off peak hour i will have a pump let us say this is a pump connected to a motor and what will happen is during off peak hours the water from the pump will be transmitted i'm just showing it in a schematic okay so what happens this is during off peak hours all right now what happens during peak hours the same water which was pumped up will now be brought down okay so let me have a turbine here where is my red pen oh yeah here this is where i need more energy so here also i have a motor and during peak hours what happens is 
this water comes down and hits the turbine and rotates it and generates electricity. So, this is a sorry this is not a motor this is a generator ok. So, this is what this is the overall concept of pumped hydro uh, or yeah pumped hydro energy storage. So, the way I have drawn the schematic is uh, is definitely in the in, in, a, in a pictorial manner. In reality what happens is the pump and the turbine are not necessarily separate turbo machines ok. So, as, as we know from our mechanical uh, background Francis type of turbine it can work both as a pump and a turbine clear. So, that is possible and uh, from electrical engineering uh, viewpoint if you have studied electric machines you would know that the same rotating machine can be used both as a motor and a generator. So, essentially what I have drawn here pump and motor as one assembly and turbine and generator as, as another assembly is not necessarily two separate assemblies ok. They are many a times the same. So, this is what I have I am again showing over here which is a picture from BBC uh, from, from one of the sources which I have, I have mentioned here. So, this is the high level reservoir and this is the low level reservoir. So, during off peak hours what happens? The water is pumped up and therefore, it attains potential energy ok. So, that potential energy during high demand is released as the water flows down and it powers the reverse turbines as I said Francis turbine is one example and uh, that is how we generate additional electricity ok. So, this in a nutshell is the principle of pumped hydro storage ok. So, what we will do today is we are going to stop over here and in the next lecture we will take off from here and do a little more analysis a deeper analysis of pumped hydro storage and also look at some of the examples uh, of installations across the world as well as in India ok ok. Thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.